Good morning, August. August. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for your questions. A lot of cool questions coming in from all over the world. We got somebody from Canada. We got somebody from Lagos, Nigeria. We got someone from Mars. I'm kidding. We don't have anyone from Mars. But I'm excited that you guys are writing in, calling in, sending in, texting in, emailing in, voice messaging in, WhatsApping in, SMSing in, emailing in, Facebooking, tweeting, Instagramming. You're ing, you're inging, you're you're pinging, inging me. This is awesome. So thank you so much for these things, these questions. I really love doing this for you guys. So I'm gonna do a Q&A sprint. So without further ado, we got a question from Nasara who lives in Ghana. Nasara is uh, studying for final exams that are coming in September. There are some obstacles, there's some uh, socioeconomic situations happening that um, are preventing Nassara from necessarily getting uh, the the amount of focus that he needs to have to really get through the, the, the exams in September and he's asking basically how do oh to, how do I succeed overcome so to succeed uh, Nassara here's the thing that I would say to you number one Get down to your core. Get down to your why. You have you have exams coming up in September. You want to succeed in them. There are things happening in your life that are making you worried about your your consistent motivation to stay focused from now until September. I think that you need to literally on a mirror on every single place that you see when you first wake up before you go to sleep throughout the day. You need to be writing post-it notes in terms of why do you want to get this degree in September. When I get the degree in September, this happens. And if you have that poster fl flashed all over the place, suddenly all the obstacles that you're going through will become more easy to overcome because you are clear on why you're doing all these things. So I would say to you, Nasara, what is the reason for all of this? Why do you want to finish your exams? When you finish your exams, what happens? Write down three, four, five things that happens when you finish those exams. Write down three or four, five things that you that are pushing you to try to get that degree. Write down three or four or five things, or the one, the one big reason that this is important to you or your family or your husband or your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, whatever it is, your country, your city and write that down, plaster it everywhere, and then that will be a daily reminder to you in terms of why you're doing it. Thanks for the question, hope this helps. We have Cody James, I am curious, how did you decide what your strengths were or were they just so self-evident for you? Currently I'm trying to learn mine and I know um, I'll bust my butt to get work done as long as I have a goal in mind. All right, cool, so Kobe, Cody, thanks for the question. It's a great question. And for those of you that don't know, Cody's obviously like watched some of my stuff and is into my whole thing about how you should really go all in on your strengths. Too many people in America are being sold this thing that you need to focus on your weaknesses, which is just such a waste of time in my opinion and a big, the biggest scam of all scams in the life coaching business, which is I'm gonna get rich by helping you continue to focus on the things that you are bad at because then I will stay in business forever. It's just, it makes me literally nauseous. It gives me a pit in my stomach. So I actually am saying, don't focus on your strengths. Go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one thousand 10, 1,000x in on your, on your strengths and the, the growth that you'll see. So the question then becomes, how do I know what my strengths are? I'd say there's a couple of reasons. For me, there are basically three things that I do. Number one, I've, I have really great people around me and I'll ask them things like, what do you think I'm exponentially better at than most people? And then I'll listen to those answers. Number two, I will actually think about what do I love to do? This is a long game, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're trying to get a job, whether you're trying to Nassara finish your exams. This is gonna take a year, two, three, four, five decades, six decades. And if you are not really tapped into the things that you love to do, it's just the sustainability of all of it is, is a little bit harder. So I would say, think about what do you really love to do? What, what videos are you watching? What YouTube things are you watching? What do you do during your free time? What do people come to you for, right? So the things that people are constantly asking you questions about, 
what are those things? Because probably if people are coming to you for different things, it means that you're good at something, whether it's a listening te technique, whether it's empathy and you putting yourself in the shoes of that person so that, that basically you can offer advice as if you were in their position is a very good skill. Um, maybe they come to you and say like, hey, is this a good song? Hey, do you think this music is cool? Maybe you're on trend musically. Maybe that you're on trend fashion wise. Hey, can you help me pick out an out outfit? Hey, like just think about what people are coming to you for. And that basically is a good indicator of what you're probably pretty good at. Uh, and then you know what, also, I think that your parents are probably a pretty good, uh, gay, like they're probably a pretty good person to ask or fa close family members. Those are the three things that I would say. Hope that helps, thanks for writing in. Always here to help. I'd love to actually hear what you come up with in terms of what are your strengths. Um, number three. Uh, great question in from Superb Shalexi. Shalexi. I don't know how to say your handle, but thanks for writing. Okay, so I basically advise friends and family on business is issues. Um, I think that I could be a motivational speaker. Some say that I'm a counselor by nature, but I don't like crowds. How can I use my gift to start sh something better for myself? That's a really great question, and I appreciate your vulnerability around your weakness. By the way, I think it's actually very good to know what your weaknesses are. I just think it's a waste of time to then put time into making those weaknesses strengths because it's just, it's, instead of becoming going from a one to a three, why not go from an eight to a 10? So being aware of your weaknesses is super important. So the fact that you don't like crowds, I'm not telling people to just ignore your weaknesses completely. I'm saying don't spend any time. Acknowledge them, spend time thinking about what they are, but that's it, don't respect them. So. Um, for you, I would say it, it's it's kind of a nice piggyback on Kobe's question, which is, you obviously have a gift. People are constantly coming to you for advice, for business advice and life advice. I would say two things: if you're going to be giving life advice, um, you just have to be careful that you're not trying to monetize the life advice in ways that's going to look sleazy or like every other single life coach out there, which means. Um, they, they make pretend like they have everything figured out so they can sell you their $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 courses. And I just, I, I can't get down with that model right now. Instead, I think what I would do is I would try to figure out how I can give as much life advice for free to people and build out some sort of business separate from that, um, which is basically what I'm doing. Like I give a lot of life advice and people call me a motivational speaker and that is something that I get hired to speak on behalf of, but those are organizations paying me to inspire their people, not people paying me to inspire themselves. Instead, what I've done is I've built a branding and digital media agency. The bills get paid from clients that we're running storytelling and communications campaigns for with real value using social media to make them money on their ROI on investing in us. And then I use all my free, like this right now is completely free. I'm not charging for anything. There's no course that's for sale at the end of this about how to motivate. That's a really way more interesting way to become motivational than selling yourself as motivation for motivation's sake to make money for yourself. The other thing I would say is, if you're gonna be a business coach, I would just take a hard look at like what kind of business advice are they coming to you for? It's probably one of two things without knowing anything about you. Number one, you've built something that other people wanna build and they come to you for that advice, which is you are, you're in a in, in very good position because th like if you can basically that I'm t totally fine with you selling. Like you built a business doing something and now people want advice on how to do that. That's fine because that's like your truth. So do that. Um, or they're coming to you for more soft skill business advice, which would be more connected to the motivational side. In which case, again, my advice would be the same as the first part of this answer, which would be figure out why they're coming to you, figuring out what business that you have going on that um, is qual kind of qualifying you as a business advice giver, focus on making the money there and then give that business advice for free because you just never know what's gonna happen. The, the free business advice that you give to someone on a soft skill, empathy, HR based thing could lead to you, they could be organizing an a, event around human resources or around communications and then all of a sudden you, you're thought of as the speaker and you make 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 dollars as a speaker at that event and that was all because you offered something for free. It's a real long game guys, I encourage you not to think about the quick $97 ebook I, um, course online and think about it the longer 10, 20, 30 years from now, what happens when you've actually added value, immense value. That's what I'm trying to do for you guys. Hope that helps. Alberta, Canada, wild boy XXX93. First of all, 
insanely jealous that you have that handle. I want it. Wild Boy XXX93. Although mine would be Wild Boy XXX82. So you're a little bit younger than me. I'm also jealous about that. Brian just kicked the camera. Wild Boy XXX93. I'd like to talk more entrepreneurship is where I'm headed. I have the fuel, just don't have the car to get there. It's funny that you said it that way because later in the question I learned that you want to start a food truck in Alberta, Canada. Uh, thanks for the question, Wild Boy. Here's the quick answer. I know nothing about food trucks. So what I would say, and, and I get questions all the time about stuff I know nothing about, and I'm not going to pretend like I know about them and give you advice because then if you follow that advice, uh, it's, just bad. it's just bad karma. What I will say is this. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of people that are running successful food trucks. So what I would say is find them on Instagram, find them in Facebook, DM them, ask them for five, 10 minutes of their time for coffee, and then ask them what they did and replicate that. There's so many people doing the things that everyone wants to be doing successfully. There's really no reason to reinvent the wheel. Like the food truck world is pretty well established. There are things that I'm assuming work and don't work. Figure out what those things are. Do the things that work. Don't do the things that don't work. I don't have the answer, but there are tons of people that you can hit on DM, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn that can guide you way better than me. So my guidance for you is find someone that can actually guide you. Number five. I messaged you last week about setting goals on a journey as a budding communications consultant and you mentioned to hit you up with an email for a video answer you have and you've done that, Casey. Casey, good to see you again. It was a real pleasure to meet you last year in New York and think you're back in Australia or London or one of those places that has a cool accent. Um, Casey, here's what I'd say. The first three or four steps to starting a consulting, a communications consulting, or any consulting business is, number one, I would say get real clear on what you offer. You know, get, get, I would write down the five things that you can do better than anybody else in a communications world. And you know, the more specific you can be, the better. So is it that you're good at creating brand strategies? Is it good that you're, you know, are you good at creating vision, mission statements, and value-driven mission propositions for nonprofits? Um, do you think that you have the, you know, can you script a one to two minute Facebook commercial better than anybody else? Are you a master at communicating with Instagram influencers to get them onto campaigns? Like really kind of think about what do you, what do you think that you're good at from a communication standpoint? The second thing I would say is you, you probably should put together some sort of online presence, whether that be social media or website or both, preferably both. Get a job or find another way to make money <clears throat> doing something that you kind of enjoy to do or that you hate, but you, that gives you the flexibility from f six o'clock at night until 10 o'clock at night to jam on your dream and um, start offering your services for free for people that you think would be dream clients. I made a list of 10 dream clients. I reached out to all of them. One of them said yes, and that was kind of a first thing. And then I just, that from there, I got momentum started. So get clear on what your communication ad value ad is make a list of 10, 100, 1,000 clients that you would love to work with, send 10 of them an email, maybe send 10 of them an email for free and 10 of them an email that you're charging, do a kind of an alpha beta, like a, you know, side by side comparison in terms of a, a test, see how many of those people respond to you that they'll take you as a coach, see how people respond to you that they'll pay you and figure that model out. And then the more and more you do of that, the more and more you realize that, okay, here are the kinds of things that these people care about, then you create free content, free content around that on an Instagram, uh, on a YouTube show, you create Instagram stuff, you create long form Facebook posts. Blogging right now is really fascinating to me. Vlogging right now, if you can do it, and by the way, you can just do that with your phone. I would write Medium articles, I would write LinkedIn articles, I would do a podcast, I would do a YouTube show. I think if you can get in front of enough eyeballs, it's, it's just a cycle. The more content you can put out, the better you're gonna be. Okay, now we have one in Spanish. Quiero, so this is gonna be in Spanish. If you don't watch Spanish, you don't have to watch this, I guess. This will be the last question. This will be the last question, so if you don't speak Spanish, no worries, go to the next one. But for the Spanish folks out, Spanish speaking folks out there, hola, como estamos? La pregunta es si yo hago coaching um, o entrenamientos para emprendedores. Sí, claro que sí, pero lo que te puedo decir en ese momento es que para mí lo más importante es el nombre de contenido, 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 contenido. Ustedes tienen que, ser, tienen que estar por todos lados. Es la misma respuesta que ya he hecho en la última pregunta. Si ustedes quieren aprender a emprender, es 
es muy difícil, para mí es muy difícil enseñar cómo puedes ser un emprendedor. Es algo que tienes que tratar, tienes que probar. Así que si tienes una idea, en este momento tú puedes empezar. Y yo les recomiendo a pensar en sus mismos como que, como una empresa de medios. ¿Y ¿Qué significa eso? Eso significa que ustedes necesitan Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, podcast. Audio está gigante, en ese momento está creciendo un montón. Así que si ustedes no tienen un podcast, aunque si en la América Latina no es tan popular en ese momento, se va a crecer muy rápido, se los juro. Y entonces tenemos que pensar en cómo nosotros podemos convertirnos a una agencia de medios. ¿Por qué? Necesitamos poner contenido por todos lados. Así que piensa en cuál es tu mensaje, cuál es la empresa que quieres empezar y crees contenido por todos lados acerca de este contenido. Por ejemplo, yo estoy en ese momento dando un montón de contenido. Yo tengo como uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cuatro cámaras en ese momento que me está grabando. Y con estas cuatro cámaras, eso es lo que vamos a hacer. Con 10 minutos de mi tiempo aquí hablando con ustedes, vamos a tener un Instagram Live, un Facebook Live, un vlog que está por YouTube y también un video que está bien producido. Entonces vamos a, y vamos a convertir eso a un podcast. Así que con estos 10 minutos vamos a tener contenido en cinco diferentes plataformas y ustedes también lo pueden hacer. Y también nosotros podemos convertir esta conversación a un artículo que vamos a poner en Medium o LinkedIn o tu blog o lo que sea y ya tienes seis diferentes cosas de contenido de 10 minutos de conversación. Y si ustedes pueden hacer eso cada día acerca de tu tema, de, de, de topic que tú quieres hablar, ustedes tienen la chance más, más grande del mundo a ganar, porque te lo juro que todo el mundo está pensando, pensando, pensando en qué, puede, qué puedo hacer o qué podría empezar o qué es mi fortaleza, o pa, 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 pero nadie está, conte está produciendo contenido escalable como estamos haciendo. Lo están, mírame, mírame como lo estoy haciendo. No escucha mis palabras, mira a mis acciones. Y cada día estamos creando contenido para qué? Para crear una marca. Yo no estoy vendiendo nada en ese momento a ustedes, ¿no? Nada, simplemente nada, cero. Porque yo sé que número uno, es importante para mí que yo pueda ayudar a la gente con mis consejos gratis. Pero número dos, también yo sé que algunos de ustedes que están mirando están pensando, oh, me gustaría llevar este man a una conferencia, a dar un kino, a dar una conferencia, o a mi negocio a enseñar cómo nosotros podemos hacer ventas o cómo nosotros podemos hacer branding para la, la empresa que tenemos o lo que sea. Pero todo empieza en contenido gratis que está muy valioso y que, que, que yo llego mucho valor a ustedes. Y de ahí yo sé, yo sé, yo sé, yo sé que voy a seguir ganando porque mi corazón y mi alma están en el, en, en el, en el lugar correcto y para mí eso es súper importante. Así que yo espero que eso les ayude mucho y, pero hay que probar, cada día inventar, cada día probar, cada día fallar, cada día tener éxito, fallar, tener éxito, fallar, aprender y renovar. Y eso es el nombre de, de, de emprendimiento en ese momento. No es algo que tú puedes sentirte ahí leyendo libro después del libro, escuchando audio después de audio, no. Así que eso es mi mensaje para ustedes. Guys, I really appreciate your attention. Thank you so much for watching. This is fun for me. Write us your questions. If you're not sure where to write your questions, we are basically on every single social platform. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat. We have a podcast. We have a daily vlog. Any of those places I am checking every single day pretty obsessively, um, on about 30, 50, 60 times a day. Love your questions. Love to hear from you. Would love to see how I can better help you. Please follow us on the social worlds. Lots of great content for free. Like I said, we're working really hard to put that out for you. So tell us what else we can help with. And uh, that's it. It's your hour. It's your dream. It's your life. So go get it because if you don't, I swear to you. No.